How hard is cooking on the body? I've had one surgery. Basically, I was holding saute pans to the point that it ripped my tendon open and kind of shredded it. Damn. My name is Jonathan, I'm 25, and I'm a chef. Chef and owner at Samba. Head chef, owner of Marn Meat. A chef catering farmer's market stand with this guy. I don't know if I would call myself a chef. Right now, I would say that I'm cooking. What's the difference? Most chefs don't want to be called chef unless they have the biggest ego. I actually agree. Chef to me means like somebody that's like actually running a kitchen. I've ran kitchens before, so I've just taken the title. How long have you been chef? Since the mid 70s. Ugh. <laughs> 25 years? Seven years. Wait, how old are you? I'm 25. I started like right out of high school. Do you catch shit for being a young chef? Oh, so much. You just get shit on so hard. <laughs> but it builds character. Let's talk about what you got here. The plastic bag at the end, it's kind of like a little grab bag. A yellow onion in there, a couple plantains, a small leek. Produce is one thing that I try not to spend too much on. We're having our kitchen redone. This is our current regimen. Nuts, hummus, vegetables. It's pretty dead boring. I'm sorry, it's not more exciting. My local produce stand, I got my veggies. So I went to a co-op for my pork and my chicken. What about over here? You got a lot of LaCroix. There's usually restaurant supply stores that sell name brand stuff and you can get a better deal on them. All these LaCroix were like five bucks. Huh? Oh, hold on a second. We just lost a can. Can wild. How often do you go grocery shopping? Every other day. Once or twice a week. So once or twice a month. How much do you spend on food in a month? 150 bucks. $200. $250 on food? That's a tiny amount. It is. Well, I eat at the restaurant almost all of the time. Because we were able to trade, our budget is allocated more for things on this side. For that stuff. Yeah, we can usually get uh, this stuff for like free or trade. Yeah. Ramen and products we're selling. Basically yeah. trading back farmers their own products to get new products. What did you eat growing up? Pretty straightforward food growing up. Meat and vegetables. I, I had a slightly different experience. I have some very nice early memories of being about five and having suckling pig in Spain and, you know, stuff like that. Lots of Pop-Tarts, sugary cereal, top ramen. Frozen vegetables, frozen meat. We were on welfare at the time, so we pretty much ate a lot of government cheese, beans and rice. How did that influence how you eat now? That's another reason why I got that little grab bag. It's not picture perfect food, but it's still sustainable. The normal person would be like, that's just trash, but it's because of the fact that you ate what was in front of you. If you didn't like it, you went hungry. How did you get into cooking professionally? I was always trying to help my mom in the kitchen and she would try my crazy experiments and be very interested and helpful. We were huge Food Network fans. The original Iron Chef, not this shitty American version that's out today. <laughs> I started cooking in college, just in their cafeteria. Then I dropped out of college and I needed a job and cooking is what I knew how to do. Ever since I like started watching my grandma cook early on, I was like, that's what I want to do. I used to play football too, so I thought it was either going to be like football or cooking. But then I stayed like super short, so I went into cooking. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to cook from these ingredients? The chicken, I plan on breaking that down and using the carcass as for stock. I will probably make some sort of hash. What's hash? Hash is a fancy way of saying things that have been either sauteed or roasted and then mixed together in cube form, so. <laughs> what are you going to do with that uncured bacon? That's my favorite bacon. I mean, I'll throw it on top of anything. Have you ever put it on the ice cream? Uh, no. What? <laughs> How hard is cooking on the body? It's rough. I got started when I was like 25, and by the time I was 28, bad back. Knees are pretty rough. I've had one surgery. Basically, I was holding saute pans to the point that it ripped my tendon open and kind of shredded it. Damn. Is there a way to improve the industry so it isn't so hard on folks? I think you'd have to improve the entire mentality of the industry. So no, I don't think so. We still live and work in a country where it's not okay to show pain. We were cooking foie gras. There's a lot of hot fat slashing in the pan and it splashed all over my arm. It's cool to be tough and strong. I'm good, chef. Don't worry about me, I'm fine. People are still going to come into work when they're hurt. At the end of the night when I took the bandage off, there was just this giant bubble popping out of my arm there. You have a high pain tolerance? I mean, I work the rest of the night, so. 
You're professional cooks. Any advice you can impart? Don't be afraid of high enough temperatures. Make sure you have sharp knives. Add salt. You'll probably mess up and that's okay. Make sure the ingredients are as high quality as you can get. That's the main thing for flavoring. You should always invest more in the food that you consume. Groceries don't and food doesn't come from a box at a store. It comes from individuals. Therefore, yeah, he's got to know. I can ramble. I'm sorry. God proof bag, man. Yeah. <laughs> Are we gonna keep the groceries? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome, thank you guys. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you.